Hey everybody, this is Johnny Dim, the big kid trying to live in an adult world. And today I'm going to give you my top three board games that I played in 2016. That's right, games that I played in 2016, not games that came out in 2016. Which I know is kind of dumb to some of you. I don't care. This is my list, not yours. First on the list is one that yeah, I'm sure a lot of you did play. I think this one may actually have come out in 2016, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I know it was prevalent in, uh, in mostly 2016. But that game, that board game, is actually Splendor without the glare. So Splendor is actually a really cool board game. This one was actually introduced to me by my wife. Uh, she played it at a convention uh, that had a big gaming room, and, and uh, someone introduced it to her. And... I was amazed at how simple that simple it was. The concept is simple. It's super easy to kind of pick up. It only takes a couple like rounds to kind of understand what's going on. It's just I call it the game of currencies, right? So you just upgrade your different currencies. I'm sure uh, a lot of you, I'm sure, have played it. But basically, you you are able to take one action a turn. You can grab some coins to buy some stuff with, or you can grab some stuff and reserve it to buy with your coins you're going to get later. So it's just it's like just planning out purchases and stuff like that and you got a goal in mind and it's the first one to 15 points it's it's literally that simple if i just told you those rules and gave you the game you, you'd figure out most of it like it's not that hard at all but for some reason i can sit down and play like three sessions of this just quick fire because i just get wrapped up in it a second game on the list is going to be stratos stratos is a game that you probably haven't played uh this game was actually made by um some Canadian friends of ours. I, I don't. I always preface it and say they're Canadian, like that means something. But the uh, we actually met the developers actually at also a uh, convention uh, here in Houston. Uh, the guys are great. Some of the friendliest people I've ever met. I mean, of course, they're from Canada, right? But the game is a combination of other board games to me, and it's maybe even some co concepts you can get from video games. Um, one of the complaints that I've heard about the game is that random chance plays too much in the game. Um, but I think any good game has a balance of, it has a fair amount of randomness, but still has uh, a lot of strategy involved. And that's, that, that's, that's, what this, that's what this game is. Like you take, you take risks, you know, and that's where the, the random chance comes in. You, you can roll a die and take a chance that it's going to screw you over or it could be really great. Who knows? But it's not just about chance. I hate games that are purely random chance. But the board is ever-changing. What I like about it is there is so much customization and so much flexibility in the game. That you can set up your own game board. You can make it completely random if you wanted to. Um, you have different classes uh, that do different things. You know, you can try. You can actually win this game without any combat at all, or you can have combat. It's, it's, it's up to you. And there's different types of combat. There's ranged combat and, and melee. It's just one of the most flexible games I've ever I've ever played. So that's why I really like this particular game. I think if you're a fan of like maybe even Final Fantasy Tactics or those kind of games like that, maybe a little other Final Fantasies, but definitely Tactics because of the grid system and that kind of thing, you might be a fan of this. Um, I would just pick it up. You might have to search for it online and buy it from the developers straight up. I, I don't know if there are any uh, online stores or anything like that. We bought ours actually at the convention. At the top of the list, it's actually going to be Mysterium. Now, I'm a gamer who loves multiplayer experiences. And what I mean by that is, and it's not just with board games, I mean in video games. And this kind of reminds me of some experiences I've had with some of the better multiplayer games, video games that I've, I've played, you know, because you're super engaged. Um, I think this, this game, is, it's a thinker, you know, and I don't mean like thinker as in you're trying to figure out... Um, like math calculations and or formulas or whatever like that not that kind of thinking this game makes you think in different ways because it's it's kind of abstract it can be a little abstract um, you're basically trying to interpret visions that are printed on a card the reason i give this game a lot of props is because it's a cooperative game it's an asymmetrical co cooperative game so there's one person who plays a ghost right and Everybody else, and this takes place in the 1920s, but everybody else on the, at, the, at the table is playing a psychic. And, and the psychics are trying to have basically a seance so they can try to figure out who killed the ghost. And the ghost is trying to, as, as best the ghost can, um, give visions to the psychic so they can actually try to figure out together who killed the ghost with what item 
in what room? I know that sounds familiar, but this is such a, 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 a such a more interesting version of what you're thinking. Clue. Uh, it's it's fantastic in that, like I said, it keeps it keeps you engaged. You're trying to interpret what the ghost is saying without the ghost actually verbally saying anything, right? And that's that's the challenge, really, is you're trying to figure all this stuff out. Actually, of the games we played um, properly, we haven't even won the game yet. And I still feel like it was, a, it was an enriching experience. It was actually fantastic. I don't know what more I could say about it to get you to buy it. Go buy that freaking game. Gosh. All these games, all these games I vouched for, all these games I had a lot of fun with, I'm going to try to put up some, at least some, some links in the description down below where it says show more down there in the description. Uh, I'm going to put some links so you can actually buy these games. Anyway, that is my list. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I'm Johnny Dim, the big kid living in an adult world. Um, if you can relate to that in, in any way, please subscribe. There'll be a button somewhere. Please subscribe. This is a, a very uh, new uh, young channel, and I, I would love to have your help in growing this. I, I, could, I would love to have your feedback too. You know, I'm growing, I'm trying to get better. So, you know, let's do this together. Let's do this together. Sorry, my speech is not great. It's getting late. So having said that, take it easy, have a good one.